Whether you like Destiny or not, there are some things that I think you should know. I personally have a strong history with Destiny. I played the beta and even started my YouTube channel based on it. After just over a year, however, after playing Destiny almost exclusively, I quit. Almost cold turkey, too. See, after you've done all the missions a bunch of times and collected virtually every piece of gear the game has to offer, all that's left is the PvP, aka Crucible, which was a lot of fun. After a while though, I noticed how incredibly imbalanced it was. I had issues with everything from the weapons to the character subclasses and some of the abilities they offered. In my opinion, I felt Bungie listened too much to the community about how the game should be balanced and didn't find that middle ground that I think experienced developers should set when it comes to feedback. I did come back for the Rise of Iron expansion for the new raid and some of the new gear, but it didn't stay long. The reason is because I was looking for a more balanced and fulfilling PvP experience that rewarded teamwork. That's when I discovered Overwatch. I tried the beta and fell completely in love with the game and experienced the longest three weeks ever after a beta for a game to launch. So my channel has evolved into an Overwatch console channel and I really haven't looked back that much. Now even though I have a lot of issues with Destiny, it has given me some of the best gaming experiences I've ever had in my gaming life that I'll always remember. Which is mostly due to the raids. If you have not experienced a Destiny raid, I, without a doubt, highly recommend you experience one for yourself. Preferably with friends who have not done the raids either. It's really something else. Some old Destiny buddies would occasionally ask me if I would ever come back. I told them probably not because I'm kind of over the loot grinding stuff and didn't feel they could ever fix the PvP completely. Then discussions started about Destiny 2's development and eventual official announcement. While my friends were getting excited about the sequel, I was holding my breath. I wanted to see some actual footage of the game and hear exactly what they plan on changing. I wanted to know if Destiny is going to change enough for me to want to come back and have those amazing experiences again. And apparently, they're changing everything. Now I know at first glance it appears to be the same game, so I'm here to let some of you know, if you are like me and have given up on Destiny, why you should care about Destiny 2. It's a complete restart. The story of Destiny 2 is basically they lose their powers, their homes, and all their cool weapons. This is such a good way to get a fresh start on this game and have it be seamlessly threaded into the story so that there is an explanation for such drastic changes. With this reset, they have a chance to rebalance and rethink every single system that was in the first game and have a real do-over, possibly getting it right this time. The weapon slot system is revamped. See, in Destiny 1, shotguns and sniper rifles, and even fusion rifles, have a bad history of being overpowered or underpowered throughout the entirety of Destiny's patches. Well, it looks like those will now be in the old heavy weapon slots, and less impactful, yet still fun, weapons will be in the primary and secondary. Sidearms, for example, are able to be used as primaries now. This definitely widened my eyes, being that one of my biggest complaints is about the weapon balance of Destiny 1. We also redesigned the weapon slots. They're gonna have a kinetic weapon, an energy weapon, and then a power weapon. Power weapons are things like fusion rifles and sniper rifles and grenade launchers. In that energy slot, in the kinetic slot, you can have the same weapons. The new weapon plan was designed to provide players with more freedom and more choice to use the stuff that they love. Supers are completely different and more refined. And they're really changing the way it feels to play the game. We have the Dawnblade. You can cast your super, you've got your sword, and you're flying over everyone, and you can just rain down fire, phoenix, projectiles that just decimate people. Then you have the Sentinel. A Sentinel is a Titan, and he is able to summon a shield that he can just knock his opponents out with. We can throw his shield and just bang it off dudes' heads. And then you have the Arc Strider. They summon this mystical staff and wield it like a crazy acrobat, cracking enemies in the head. It's awesome. 
Now, I have no idea if they're bringing back any of the old subclasses or what the other new subclasses will do, but the ones that have been shown are much more similar to each other than the old subclasses of the first game, which I feel is a very good thing when it comes to the PvP aspect. All the new subclasses are duration-based rather than a one-off, and all are weapon-based dealing both with short and long-range combat rather than one or the other. So it seems that Guardians fighting each other in the Crucible will have a much more fair fight. They'll just each look cool in different ways. For me, this is very exciting. The worlds are more seamless and alive. Bungie has explained that you will now be able to go between planets without having to go to orbit. When I first heard this, I wasn't really that impressed because I feel like it should have been in the game a long time ago already, but it's still good to mention. Now with Destiny 2 being on current gen consoles now and not on last gen at all, the areas to explore are larger than in Destiny 1. It was stated specifically that the European Dead Zone is easily twice the size of Destiny 1's biggest map. Depending on your view, that may or may not impress you. For me, I think it'll be enough, but we'll wait and see. The new worlds to explore do look really great, however. So one thing I'm super excited about is that the worlds you explore now have NPCs that give you missions. As common as this is in other games, I think Destiny players will appreciate it the most because all NPCs are in the tower, or the main hub, whatever you want to call it, of the game, and the worlds we explore have nothing but bad guys. So this is something that will give those areas more life to them, especially because the area you can trade goods are actually on the planet now, and not in a tower that you have to fly to after you go to orbit, leaving the very planet you were going to go back to anyways. Clans are now managed in-game, which is really cool if you're in a clan and wanted something like this for a long time. Now whether you like clans or not, they are adding features so that you can experience the end-game content easily, such as the raids. There's this feature called Guided Games, which is kind of matchmaking, kind of isn't. I'll be honest, I am not in favor of matchmaking for something like the raids. But I understand and respect the arguments made by those who want matchmaking for that content. So this is Bungie's middle ground solution because they still feel matchmaking is not a good solution for raids. So with this feature, you can actually join a clan's group that already has a spot open and they can guide you through whatever you're trying to complete, Nightfall, Raid, whatever. Only time will tell how the feature will hold up, but it seems interesting. The last thing I want to mention probably shocked me the most and I had a holy shit moment. So if you don't know already, Destiny 2 will also be available for the first time for PC players. Likely due to the growing popularity of PC gaming, especially in the competitive scene, Bungie seems to want to start on that market for Destiny's sequel. What really shocked me was that Blizzard came on to announce that they will host Destiny 2 exclusively on Battle.net. That's right, Destiny 2 will be right next to WoW, Heroes of the Storm, Diablo, Hearthstone, Starcraft, and Overwatch. And it will be the first non-Blizzard game to be featured on Battle.net. Mind blown. So how ironic that the game I cover now, Overwatch, will be side by side with Destiny 2, a franchise I walked away from. So with all of this I've seen, I've decided to pre-order Destiny 2 and will be playing the beta this summer. What do you guys think? Have you ever played Destiny? If you did, do you still play it today or did you walk away at some point as well? Are you thinking about getting Destiny 2? And if not, has this video alleviated some doubt and now you might consider getting it? Let me know in the comments below. Well that's it for today guys. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to share, like, and subscribe to the channel. My name is Chit and I approve this message. Journey and